What's up, boat gang? Welcome back. Out here in the garage, and uh, got a little package last night from Ryan over at Mad Lizard. So, just want to do a quick little video since I know uh, I know Big B is having success with the turn fins. I've had success with them in the past. This is my UL19. For those of you guys that haven't seen it, full disclosure, it's not fully stock. You know, I did add an extended strut to essentially lengthen the boat. So instead of a 30 inch boat, you know, now it, it's going to ride more like a 31 and a half inch boat, right? Because on a hydroplane, you know, the only thing in the back, the only thing in the back touching the water is the prop. So if you can extend the strut back, you're essentially getting free length out of the boat, which is pretty cool, right? So extendo strut. And then the biggest change to the front of my Sponsons is that the stock UL19 will have these big planing wedges up front, right? And those are really only used to help the boat get up on plane. Once you're actually underway, you know, in theory, only the back of your step is in the water. Um, so I got rid of these on mine. But as far as back here, the actual ride surface should be fairly similar. Mine is sharpened up. I also added a little lip on this side, like a pearl, like a black pearl would have, just to give it a little more bite in the turns. And then the biggest other change on my boat is I've done a lot of work to move the CG forward. So again, I know you guys are probably sick of me talking about this. So the reason that CG becomes important on a hydro is because in a turn, the entire boat, the entire seven, eight pounds of the boat is hanging from this turn fin, right? The boat wants to go that way. The turn fin's keeping it this way. So if you think of this as a axis of rotation this entire heavy boat is rotating off the middle of this turn fin right and so on a stock ul19 right where the cg is like back here right it makes it very difficult to get an aggressive like a mojo turn fin right which is what i have on the boat now makes it extremely difficult if not impossible ask me how i know to get a mojo fin to work on the stock boat settings. And a lot of that, right, is because if the CG is back here and you've got a really aggressive turn fin, right, well, now you're trying to balance the boat on this turn fin, on the curve of the turn fin. And the only way you're able to do that without CG is by forcing it with the strut. So now you've got the strut forcing it, but now the turn fin's unhappy and, uh, so that's kind of my theory as far as, again, just my theory here, right? But I've been able to make my UL19 work with the Mojo Fin. And it's my opinion that unless you do a lot of modifications, move your CG forward, you know, now I've got my CG, you know, much closer to the middle. My opinion, unless you do all that, you're probably not going to have much success with a Mojo Fin or an otherwise aggressive fin, right? So I've talked with Ryan at Mad Lizard about this quite a bit. By the way, Evo 2240, Hydra X 4S boat. This boat was previously a 6S boat and there was no issues on power. The boat did 75 on the stock prop, like nothing. And yeah, 4S packs will give me more runtime. I think I'll get plenty of speed, 70 plus, no problem. And really it'll help me with my CG, right? So back, back to the turn fin CG, I'm gonna try and make this quick. This is just my understanding of it. But if the center of gravity is behind the middle of the turn fin, what's gonna happen in a really hard turn, the boat's gonna wanna wash out. The back is gonna kind of slide out and the boat's going to kind of oversteer, if you will. If the CG is in front of the axis of rotation, the boat will kind of want to understeer. So rather than the back sliding out, the front is going to want to go wide. It's going to want to kind of oversteer a turn, uh, as well as some straight line kind of weird handling characteristics. So again, all this to say, if you've got a stock boat, you're going to have 
and this is what I found. I talked to Ryan about this. You're going to have more success with something like this JL fin, which is going to have an extremely minor curve in it, right? And so if you can't get the CG right, you know, you can kind of band-aid fix it with the strut and try and force it. But really what this boat, if you've got a closer to stock configuration, is going to like is something like the JL fin, which is a fin like this, it's it's working really well for Big B, and it's not hard to figure out why. It's because this is essentially a straight fin, right? And when you have a straight fin, it's a much more forgiving to get your setup right. So there is a very slight curve just in the bottom, and I think Big B has even shortened his a little bit, which helps uh, even more to my point of, you know, at that point, you're basically running a straight fin, and what's nice about this fin is that because it's longer, even though it's straight, because it's longer, it's still going to bite really well. So anyway, so back to Mad Lizard. Here's his hybrid fin that he sent me. I have ran this before. It's a little bit faster than the Mojo just because it doesn't have as aggressive of a, a curve in it. I'm excited to try this one. This one's a, the JL. It's slightly longer with even less curve yet. And then here's a here's a mojo off my Q Hydro Pearl, just so you can see how aggressive the mojos are. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the long and short of it. Uh, running videos to come, brand new electronics. It will be a 4S boat. It's 2300, so 6S would be a little spicy. But again, this is not a saw boat, right? This is not... I'm not going for GPS records. If that was the case, I would have thrown a straight fin on it and an ABC prop and just sent it, you know, and we'll see my boat now that it's got really more correct CG would probably do incredibly, I think very well in like a straightaway saw pass, but um, yeah, not really the goal. The goal with this boat for me is to be able to clamp the trigger and not let up until the battery's dead. Just seven laps at 65, 70 miles an hour. That's, to me, that's that's where the fun is on a Hydro. Probably one of the more fun boats I have. So you guys are going to see lots more from this boat. Uh, I'm going to get the electronics installed, do that whole thing, get the correct KV. And Big B, I know for a fact, along with others, will be running similar setups we're going to be testing more Mad Lizard fins, and uh, it should be fun. The only thing, I wish that this boat wasn't discontinued because I feel like a lot of you guys, along with me, are going to fall in love with this boat and find out it's discontinued, which is kind of a bummer, right? Because we're these are, these are super fun, and they're tricky to get dialed in, but when you do, they're awesome, and... Uh, yeah, so I just, that's, that's kind of a bummer because I feel like a lot of guys are going to want to get a Hydro, get into this. There's a TFL Popeye. There's also a Delta Force if you wanted to build something. Haven't ran them, but they're similar Hydros. One is a ready to run. But anyway, if you can find a, a used UL19 anywhere locally, probably a good buy. I'd recommend getting one. They are super fun and they have made me fall in love with Hydros. So I think that's it. Um, I know Big B just recently put a really sharp uh, knife edge on his. I, you know, if you can sharpen this thing up, if you can sharpen this thing up to get like polished and really sharp, that'd be cool. To be honest, I'm kind of terrified of cutting myself on stuff. So I don't know. There's a balance, right? You want it sharp enough to cut the water, obviously, but you don't want some kind of safety hazard where you're going to be needing stitches because you grabbed your boat out of the water and right. So I try to, you know, within reason, within reason, uh, last thing, if you got turtles like big B does, and like I do use a brass rudder breakaway bolt. If this thing hits, it'll just pop that off and you're not going to rip the mount off of your boat. So uh, yeah, or you can slot it, which I think is what he did, but, uh, a simple brass bolt, you can still get it tight enough to hold the adjustment. And, uh, yeah, I think we wrap this one up in under 10 minutes. So not too much rambling for you guys. 
Hope the boat gang's doing good, and we'll see you on the next one. Later, guys.